uh, guidance for yogis at interviews. When a beginning yogi observes the main object, making it an anchor for the mind, existing feelings within are not apparent at first. Just thinking and imagination appear. At the start of practice, one is not aware every time there is thinking. Sometimes one is aware of the thinking and sometimes one isn't. If one is aware of it, one has to report it. So that all kinds of thoughts do not arise. One must focus on the main object and follow it closely. When yogis has sat for a while, after one says for ten. 15 or 20 minutes. Small feelings of discomfort arise in one's body. Yet as comfort and discomfort occur in one's body, so too in the mind various kinds of Pleasant and unpleasant feelings gradually arise. Gradually arise. If something has arisen, one must observe it. But when reporting, don't use the what we don't use the word we when there is itchiness see itching when aching aching when numb numbness when tingling, tingling, it is better to use ordinary language to describe sensations. Let us say that while observing, arising, and falling, one place starts to ache. It has arisen. Here it has started to ache. We don't do anything to make it ache. It is aching on its own due to bad contact and pleasant feeling arises. The yogi focuses on noting aching, aching, aching. That is observation of Vedana. What happens to this ache? Does it ache more? Does it stay the same? Does it decrease or disappear completely?
if it aches more, Yogi say, it aches more. If it stays the same, Yogi say, it stays the same. If it decreases, Yogi says, it decreases. If it becomes weak, say it becomes weak. If, if, if it goes away completely, Yogi say it goes away completely. One must be able to say that. It starts to itch somewhere. It doesn't itch because we made it itch. It itches by itself. What is one's job to note? Itching, what happens? Does the itchiness increase, stay the same, start to decrease, go away completely? One has to be able to say, these are examples. is paving the way for you. Report about all feelings, how noted and what known. Besides the various thoughts and feelings that can arise in one's body and mind, why? One is observing the main object, sights, sounds, smells, tastes, and all sorts. And all sorts of touches can also arise. Follow by craving, wanting to um, and laziness. Then restlessness, worry, doubt, crit criticizing, remembering, knowing clearly, paying attention, delight. Such satisfaction, peace, calm, ease on meditation, and many other objects can also arise. The Buddha called this Dhamma or natural phenomena a term which summarizes all the kinds of objects mentioned above. The Buddha was concise and concise and effective in his use of words. In no other religion outside of Buddhism is such a precise use of was found only the Buddha use was in such a way grouping various natural phenomena together as Dhamma or natural phenomena. This Dhamma or my objects arise Let us say that craving arises. 
what happens when one knows craving anger arises in the mind what happens when one knows it one must be able to say how do you feel sluggish energy is low note it what happens there is a restlessness one knows it what happens the mind is a worry one knows it what happens the mind is a squared evaluation reflection and doubts are arising one knows them what have been whatever these dramas my objects arise one must know them another one on to note walking meditation likewise why during walking meditation focus on the leg and note stepping right step left step or lifting moving forward placing down at the moment of the lifting can you observe it closely from the slightest beginning of the lifting until its end or not if you can observe it closely what do you see do you see the lake or the position of the lifting up or do you see some qualities such as lightness heaviness stiffness or pushing one must be able to say how it occurs therefore when describing a physical object one must be able to mention one or the following its form position or true nature one must observe carefully in order to be able to say this if noting moving can one observe carefully from the beginning or the moving and day its end or not if one if one can do so what quality does one know does one come to know the form of the lake or the position of the stepping forward in the movement uh, in the moment of a moving forward what quality does one come to know pushing from behind being full from the front one must be able to say what is there when no dim blazing also 
one has to focus continuously from the slightest beginning of the lower in the foot until the moment it comes to rest completely on the floor or the ground. When one can follow closely, can one do so continuously from beginning to end or not? One must be able to say, if one can follow continuously with the mind falling on, falling on the object, what does one know? Does one know the form of the lake? Does one know the position of the place in the lake? Or does one know heaviness, lightness, softness, stiffness, or tension? One must be able to say what one comes to know. This method of reporting, which our Sayaraji has created for the yogis, is very important. If Sayaraji says, just this much, most people will understand. But if Sayaraji doesn't explain some points openly and clearly, some yogis will not understand. There are other objects such as bending, stretching, leaning, taking one's head, sitting down, standing up, and so on. Regarding these barriers as two, they arise and one observes them. Is one's mind concurrent with the object or not? Does the mind reach the object of the observation? If it reaches the object, what quality does one come to know? It is very important to be able to say one needs to be able to report beginning with the primary object. During city meditation, one focuses the mind on the abdomen and observes studying with the rising and falling. It is therefore important to be able to report beginning with the rising and falling. It is not right if one merely says one noted the rising and falling and then goes on to talk about other things. For the most part, what Sayaraji hears is, Bande, I noted the rising and the falling. Why I was observing the rising and falling, the yogi then continues to talk about all sorts of their things. 
if one speaks about other things. Instead of accurately describing the main point, which should be mentioned, it's as it's as though one doesn't think it's important. Sayaroji thinks this is not right. Therefore, so that the yogis can learn to practice and report correctly studying from the basis. Sayadoji has written some verses in order to pave the way. Please pick up you are and out in front of you. Guidance for interview. Mm, tell about the rising, how noted, and what is known. Tell about the falling, how noted, and what is known. Object noting what is known. These three points are key. Number four, include these three precisely and clearly for each object seen. Can you follow closely right away when the object comes? Steadfastly, concurrently, can you note or not? If you can say what was known completely and truthfully, if you cannot, whatever happened, say how you noted or was known. Please follow me. Tell about the rising. How noted and what is known. Tell about the falling. How noted and what is known. Object noting what is known. These three points are key. Include these three precisely and clearly for each object seen. Can you follow closely right away when the object comes? Steadfastly, concurrently, can you note or not? If you can say what was known completely and truthfully, if you can know whatever happened, See how you noted what was known. Again, all together. Tell about the rising, how noted and what is known. Tell about the falling, how noted and what is known. Object noting what is known. These three points are key. Include these three precisely and clearly for each object seen. Can you follow closely right away when the object comes? Steadfastly, concurrently, can you know or not? If you can say what was known completely and truthfully, if you cannot, whatever happened, say how you noted what was known.
another talk is um, these three characteristics. When practicing meditation, every yogi should also understand the three characteristics or lakana. Lakana means characteristics or distinguishing mark. What are these three? Number one, individual characteristics, sabhava lekna. Number two, momentary characteristics, sankata lekna. And number three, coma characteristics. Hmm. One must understand these three terms among these three Zabawa Lekana refers to, to the substance or unique individual qualities or the mental and physical phenomena. Let us say we feel our body. If we touch a bony area, we find the quality of hardness or firmness. If we feel the flesh, we find the quality of a softness, squishiness. In the scriptures, this type of matter is called uh, Atavi Datu in Pali, in English, the art element, or we could simply say art, art. Because of its quality of being hard or soft, it is called Bhattavita Du, or the art element. Only Bhattavita Du, the art element, has this quality of being hard or soft. The other elements do, does have this quality. Seeing these qualities, one will say, that is definitely, definitely, but we, that is the earth element, hardness and softness, uh, it is individual qualities. These are called the bhava, hmm, sabhava lekna. The element of the temperature is just the same. Temperature refers to both heat and cold. The element of the temperature is called the Jodha Du. In the scriptures, it is commonly called the fire element. The fire element, one thing of heat, if one calls it the fire element. In fact, the element of the temperature does not only include the quality of a heat. It also includes the quality of the coolness. If we speak of the temperature, it is just the Jordan due to heat and cold. The quality, of them, the quality of temperature only exists in this fire element called Dejo. It doesn't exist in the other elements. 
Seeing these qualities, one will say that is definitely Tejoda too. The fire element, the element of temperature, As far as water is concerned, the quality of the flowing only occurs in Abodadu, not in the other elements. See, it is quality, one will say that is Abodadu, that is the water element. Wayo has the quality of stiffness, tension, and movement. Only air has these qualities. They don't occur in the other elements. Seeing these qualities, one will say that is the air element, that is Vayodadu. The mind has the quality of taking an object, as when the seeing mind takes something visible as its object, content, pal in pali fasa. The mental fetter which arises together with the mind and color, it has the quality of the making content. Feeling or virana has the quality of a feeling. Physical and mental phenomena each have their own qualities. Which is called Zabawa Lekana in Pali. It is own unique individual characteristic. One should know that the unique quality of a given physical or mental phenomena is called Zabawa Lekana. Every individual guidance has a beginning, a middle, and an end, or rising, continuation, and dissolution. In Bali, these are called Ubada, Titi, and Benga. Ubada means beginning. Titi means heading towards the dissolution, existing for a moment. Benga means a dissolution, disappearance. In everyday language, we could say beginning, middle, and end, or in other words, arising momentary momentary continuation and dissolution. Every natural guide risk disorder, mental and physical phenomena, such as hardness, softness, Heat, cold, stiffness, tension, movement, knowing an object, content, feeling, and so on. As a beginning, middle, and end. Each has a moment of arising, of continuation and of dissolution. The momentary characteristics of all mental and physical phenomena, 
that is the kaida risk disorder having a start middle and end is called sankhata lakana physical and mental phenomena that arise due to conditions have a moment of arising of continuation and dissolution these three moments are called sankhata lakana Sierraji explained another topic uh, the way to note when eating and drinking hmm. the way to note when eating and drinking for yogis there are few opportunities to eat and drink if the yogi is twice a day there are just two times for eating when eating the you share meal chewing a snack or drinking a drink there is assembly taking the food with the hand or a spoon with the hand or a spoon scooping it up and eating it that is all there is they have yogi must yogis must take care as a usual to observe the stabbing of the lake as they go from their place to the dining hall since the stabbing is evident arriving at the dining table sitting down on the chair everything must be done mindfully when that has all been done they are looking at the plate of food seeing reflection for the spoon taking hold of the spoon moving it dipping it picking at a balanced amount of food bringing the spoon to the mouth opening the mouth putting the food in closing the mouth putting the spoon down chewing due to chewing knowing the taste with every bit of food there should be mindfulness all the way to the end of the meal the noting time in connection with the eating is short however yogis who know the continuously can gain enlightenment even when eating
can gain enlightenment even when eating. When I studied the Buddha's teachings, I read that in the days of old, in Sri Lanka, they gave priority to practice. They gave priority to practice. Pati Pati in Pali. The monks would go on arms round in a populated place and finish their meal near vine. They would not return to their monastery to eat, but would go into one of the dining pavilions mm, or, or the dining pavilions in the area and eat there. Dining pavilions were constructed for the monks by the lay donors. It is said that there is no dining pavilion where a monk has not meditated and begun an arahant. All the pavilions are placed where a monk has realized arahantship. Realize arahantship. That is what is said based on that evidence. Yogis who understand the benefits of the Satipatthana cherish the practice and observe that meticulously can gain concentration and wisdom even while they are eating cherish the practice and observe meticulously can gain concentration and wisdom every while they are eating even before they become noble ones areas like those monks they can gain collectedness of mind. Samadhi and develop knowledge stage by stage in order to become a noble person. At least if they have mindfulness, they gain the immediate benefits of Achilles are not being able to arise. Benefits of Achilles are. Achilles are means a mental defilement. Mental defilement not being able to arise to aim for at least this benefit and observe actions involved in eating so as not to miss is the yogi's responsibility responsibilities mm. eating drinking and so on. Many everybodies as not to miss is the gains responsibility. In the whole body, 
they are kind sort of touching, touching something hot and knowing that, touching and knowing something rainy, knowing something rainy, touching and knowing, touching and knowing something soft, touching and knowing things warm, hot or cold, touching and knowing things stiff, tight or moving. These are connected with the entire body. Ex excluding the tips of the fingernails and toenails, the hair, dry skin, and dry flesh, they spread through all every fleshy, moist area. They are restorators capable of receiving hardness softness, gender things, heat, warmth, cold, stiffness, and tightness. They are called the body base or kaya pasada. Kaya pasada in Pali. Okay. So our disco for today. We will continue to tomorrow. May you gain the full benefit of human life, which is so hard to get and or meeting the Buddha's teaching, which is so rare to find. May you be well, happy, and peaceful. Sadu, sadu, sadu.